Hi piano teachers, in today's video I'd like to give you a quick rundown of how I assess whether a piano student is sitting at the right height at their digital piano or acoustic piano. And this is of course incredibly important in order to avoid injury and to give our students the best chance of playing really well and enjoying their practice as much as a student can enjoy their practice. So I put the camera a little bit further away today so that you can actually see my full setup here. So really, I start with, um, you can start kind of at the top of the body or at the bottom. I start with the feet because we wanna make sure the feet are on the floor. Now, if you've got a really small student, I'm gonna tell you some tricks at the end that I use if they can't reach the floor. But for most students, it's important that their feet are flat on the floor, their feet are spaced apart, and also that they're sitting towards the front of the bench because that gives us most maneuverability as we move around the instrument. Even if a student isn't really doing massive chords down the piano, they still need to get used to this when they first begin. So the first thing to do is avoid ever pulling the bench in and sitting like you would a normal chair because that's just not going to give you the right positioning at the piano. And of course, if you've taught students for any length of time, you'll see them doing this all the time, particularly at recitals, and it just makes me really cringe. So I always tell students, if anything, move the bench out. So here's a good position for me, and I'm sitting again on that, that front half of the bench, feet on the floor, shoulder width apart, maybe a bit more, and I'm ready to then assess the height of the bench. So how do you determine the best height for a student? Well, it's actually relatively easy. With a student who's got a nice relaxed grip, and the easiest way to do that is just to get the, them to hang their arms down by their sides, pick their hands up, put them on the keys without trying to maneuver or change anything about the shape, and then have a look at their arm position. Now, ideally, we should be leaning slightly forward, so I'm not sort of here, and I'm not leaning back. There's a sort of perfectly upright position. I tend to lean just a little bit forward. When my hands are on the keyboard here, we want to aim for a more or less parallel to the ground with your forearms, and your elbows slightly in front of the body. So this is pretty much my perfect kind of position. I like having a slightly higher position at the piano, so I like kind of going down into the piano. Some people would prefer perhaps to see me playing with a slightly lower piano bench so that my arms are perhaps more in this kind of a position. But I like just slightly higher. So that's my most comfortable position and I can easily play the full range of the keyboard. I've got nice control with my feet flat on the ground. So what happens when students uh, often start piano lessons with you? They might have um, parents who aren't really committed to buying a good instrument. And to me that's okay because I totally understand that. The main thing though is that they're not getting their child to practice piano with a little digital keyboard on the end of their bed and they're sitting cross-legged trying to practice on their bed or, or on the kitchen table which are often way too high. So one of the most important things to do, even if they don't have an amazing instrument yet, is to get them set up at the right height. Most crucially, they need some kind of an adjustable bench. At worst case, get one of those cross brace benches, and I'll put a link to one of those below, uh, that can be adjusted just like a piano keyboard can be, because you really wanna get that balance right from the beginning. All right, so that's how we wanna sit at the piano. Now we all know that Glenn Gould and certain famous pianists of the past have sat incredibly low. So Glenn Gould was almost sort of hunched over the keys with his elbows well below the uh, key level. And we've had others who are quite downwards. We've had um, pianists like Lang Lang who love to perform really far back <laughs> and others who are very close. So of course there's lots of flexibility here, but for students who are just beginning, we wanna get it right from the start, they can then, as they progress through, they might adjust as they get older. Their bodies are growing, their fingers are getting longer and their legs are getting longer, so things will inevitably change. But to get them set up with just those main guidelines I think is really important. Feet flat on the floor, front edge of the bench, arms approximately parallel to the ground and elbows just in front of the torso. So we want to avoid students playing like this, which happens when they sit very close because they can't really move around very much. And we want to avoid them being way down low like this or way up high like this, which is happens when you might stand up to play. Because again, you've got potential troubles in the wrist coming from that because of the nature 
of the set of um, all the tendons going through the carpal tunnel through here. So keep those two things in mind and I think that'll be helpful. So for students who are too small to reach the floor, you've got a few different options. One of the best ones that I've seen is using simply uh, foam, pieces of foam um, flooring. They're kind of rubber flooring. It looks a bit like this. I haven't got any here at the moment because I haven't got any really small beginners with me um, to stack up on their bench. And they can do this. You can have these in your studio and they can certainly have them at home. They're sold in Australia, places like Kmart or sports stores or on Amazon. And I'll put some links below to where I found them before. The good thing about those is they're quite steady or sturdy, I should say. Uh, and they are kind of sticky, so they'll sit together and they won't slide off each other. And you can put any number on the bench if they're not, uh, if the bench doesn't actually uh, roll up high enough. The thing to watch out for are cushions, uh, and you want to discourage cushion use at home as well because cushions are wobbly, right? Even pillows, they're just not stable enough. So making sure they've got some kind of stable foundation is really crucial. Now the other issue you're gonna get is what do we do with their feet? Because if their feet can't touch the floor, we don't want them to have dangling legs like this. And we know kids are quite happy to have dangling legs a lot of the time but it's not ideal for their playing. So what do we do? Well, look, the simplest things to do is just grab some phone books, if you still have such a thing, or a box, shoe boxes could work at, at a pinch, to get them a firm, firm platform on which to put their feet and give them that stability. Please don't let your students just have legs swinging like this when they play. Uh, it's by no means ideal and it's not a good habit to get into. The other way you could go is to buy something like this, which is a pedal extender. And by pedal extender, what we mean is it sits over the three pedals and it just raises that platform up so they've got somewhere to put their feet but the pedals still work as well. And most of these kinds of pedal extenders, and I'll put again some links below, are adjustable. So you can adjust the height and it will still play with the pedal. So this is just fantastic. If you teach a lot of young students and um, your studio doesn't have one already, I would definitely encourage you to get one. But at a pinch, I would say, just get a shoe box or some kind of wooden structure that you can put. So at least they're resting their feet on something. The great thing about the pedal extender, of course, too, is that they can still use the pedals without the other alternative, which is that they have to really kind of half sit stand on the front edge of the bench to be able to use the pedal. Now, at a pinch, I'm okay with that for a short piece of music, but ideally we want to get them used to how it feels to sit and play the piano in a comfortable position. So they're my tips for uh, sitting at the piano and helping your student do exactly that. Uh, so I guess the main sort of things to consider are making sure that height is right, and then making sure that uh, feet aren't hanging so they're flat on the floor and you've got the elbows and everything right because there are so many times I see videos of students who are a teacher is struggling to help play some particular style or a scale or their fingers are doing something weird and quite often it's related to just how they're sitting so it might not solve everything, but it's certainly a great way to start. I hope this has helped. If you've got any conflicting advice, or if you in fact disagree with how I set my students up, then leave me a comment below. I'd love to find out more about your approach. Until next time, see you soon. Now, just before you go, make sure you check out some of my other videos. We're gonna put a link to one of them up here. And I do also encourage you to check out my Inner Circle membership. We'll put a link over here. It's a great place to hang out with other teachers and get all the creative and supportive help that you need from other teachers around the world and also all of our fantastic courses. And of course, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Until next time, see ya.